revision part of uh, non banking financial companies shortly we call it as nbfc advance accounts normal weightage around 6 to 8 marks in exams so what are these nbfcs they are into finance sector but they are not banks they are into finance but they are not banks and hence they are called as non banking financial companies you might have heard of bajaj finance muthut finance mannapuram gold so on and so forth all these are nbfcs friends some of them are into finance industry some going for higher purchase and leasing business so on and so forth a question definitely comes into mind is what is the biggest difference between them and the banks so what is the big difference between a bank and nbfc is already given in our textbook distinction between bank and nbfc demand deposits yes a bank can accept demand deposits but nbfc can't and that main difference comes out with other two differences because bank does accept deposit bank has to give check facilities nbfc cannot issue checks because bank issue checks bank has to be a part of settlement system where we says clearing house of rbi so payment and settlement system yes it is a part of pss nbfc cannot be because they are not issuing checks then what they have to do with clearing house nothing and the another resulting difference is the cover of dicgc deposits and investment credit guarantee corporation of india for all bank deposits dicgc insurance cover is available but for nbfcs it is not there the questions which are asked from this topic nbfc type 1 calculate net owned asset second is regarding classification of advances like standard assets substandard assets doubtful assets and loss assets third is regarding calculation of provision for doubtful debts one more is about accounting for investments done by nbfc not much more into depth but definitely weightage of 6 marks is not less at all first one calculation of net own funds or net fund asset we can also use the word net on funds it has specific steps suggested which are there in our textbook also your first step will be to find out gross own fund before you find net own funds your first job is to find out gross own funds how do you find gross own funds is paid up equity share capital add paid up convertible preference share capital all free reserves to be added security premium to be added add capital reserve excluding revaluation reserve less pnl debit balance accumulated loss all deferred revenue expenditures and other intangible assets this total is called as gross own funds after calculating gross own funds second step is to see how much is investment done by our nbfc in shares and debentures of subsidiaries and group companies so investment in subsidiaries book value of investment in shares and investment in debentures is the second thing to be totaled from this total of investment you will subtract 10% of gross on funds here is a means what 10% of gross on funds are deducted this is the resulting figure and this resulting figure you should subtract from step 1 gross on funds to get 
the final answer net own funds. Normally, we classify NBFCs in two part NBFCs accepting deposits and not accepting deposits. Those which are accepting deposit normally has more than 500 crores net worth asset size. Those which are non deposit accepting NBFCs, they are further classified in two part systemically important and non systemically important. Systemically important are those whose asset size is greater than 500 CR and non systemically important less than 500 or equal to 500 CR. So, that was the first point calculation of net own funds from gross own funds. You also have provisioning requirement. Now, if I make a simple kind of a tree diagram for understanding the questions on provision for doubtful debts or you can say provision for loss as per the calculation aspect. The NBFCs are classified in two categories, those NBFCs which are into higher purchase and leasing business, those which are into others. Those NBFCs which are into higher purchase and leasing business, they have to create two provisions. One is main provision which is called as basic provision and second is additional provision. When you discuss about provision for doubtful debts, we discuss in this particular way the classification. Okay. If you see our textbook, this particular one, this is about classification given, the asset classification, how do you identify standard asset, substandard asset, doubtful assets and loss assets. It says standard assets non default in repayment of principal or interest means there is no default it may be overdue it may be a bit late but there is no default standard assets substandard asset which is classified as npa up to for systemically important np up to 12 months for non systemically important they are npa up to 18 months now, if it is more than 12 months and more than 18 months in each category, it becomes doubtful. Up to 12 and up to 18 months, substandard, more than 12 and more than 18 months, doubtful. Okay. And what are loss assets identified by the NBFC itself or internal or statutory auditor, external auditor as default? non recoverable that this asset is something which is 100 percent washed off no chances of recovery we call them as loss assets i prepared just now provisioning requirement for others other than those companies which are into other than higher purchase and leasing business the provisioning requirement is classified in two categories systemically important and non systemically important right standard assets 0 0.40 percent and 0.25 percent rest all are same in both categories only first standard assets percentages are different 0 0.40 percent and 0 0.25 percent substandard assets in both 10 and 10 percent secured and doubtful is their doubtful assets secured portion of that up to one year 20 percent more than one year and up to three years 30 percent more than three years it is 50 percent unsecured portion of doubtful assets 100 percent and loss assets pure bad debts 100 percent highly similar to banking company now when you talk about the part of higher purchase and leasing NBFCs, 
how do you calculate their provision for loss? How do you calculate their provision for doubtful debts? Here it is. provisioning requirement of NBFC which are into higher purchase and leasing business. Two types of provisions, normal provision that is a basic provision and additional provision. How do you find out the basic provision? Normal provision is installment overdue. What do you mean by installment overdue? That installment which is delayed by the customer. Suppose your company which is into higher purchase has sold a car. I am the customer, I paid you down payment. I paid you first installment and second installment I am delaying. So, that second installment itself is delayed, is overdue. Then add installment not due. Say my total installment period was 5 years down payment I gave you, first installment I gave you. I defaulted in the second installment, means in future still three installments. So, that one installments not due are the total amount of future three installments. Then minus unmatured finance charges. What do you mean by unmatured finance charges? Total interest of future three installments. Out of five installments, I defaulted in the second installment. So, total interest of future three installments will be finance charges not matured. And last one, WDV, the book value, the net book value of the asset. I gave the example that I used it for two years, I defaulted in the second installment. So, WDV of the asset, in our example it was car. So, WDV of the car and that WDV of the car considering depreciation at 20 percent per annum by straight line method. So, the original cost 20 percent depreciation for first year, 20 percent depreciation for second year, I subtract and that will be the minus part. The ultimate total, this is a final total. This is called as normal provision, you can call it as basic provision. In case of higher purchase companies, over and above basic provision, you have to go for provisions about additional provision. Requirement says additional provision will depend upon two things. What is overdue period and the amount of provision depending on the overdue period will be certain percentage of the book value of that asset. So, two things first parameter what period it is overdue that period will give you certain percentage and that will be percentage on the, the net book value, the WDV of the concern asset. See the table, additional provision table, higher purchase installments or so lease installments and percentage provisioning requirement. First, overdue up to 12 months, default up to 12 months, guideline says no need for any provision. Then as default goes up, the rate of provision also goes up. Look at that, more than 12 months, but less than or equal to 24 months and the provisioning requirement is 10 percent of the book value of the asset. If default overdue is more than 24 months, but less than 36 months, the provision rate goes up from 10 to 40 percent more than 36 months, but less than 48 months is 70 percent and more than 48 months is 100 percent. Everyone, so to remember this lab, 
that up to 12 months no then 12 to 24 24 to 36 36 to 48 and last more than 48 so provisioning requirement for higher purchase and leasing companies two basic provision and additional provision other than higher purchase and leasing i discussed with you that standard substandard doubtful and secured up to one year more than one year to three years and more than three years doubtful and unsecured and lastly losses that was a provisioning requirement how to classify them into standard substandard that also we have discussed overdue period so that is standard it is npa for 12 months or 18 months depending on systemically important and non systemically important substandard if it is more than 12 months it becomes doubtful more than 18 months it is doubtful and loss assets are those assets which management or auditor has certified that this is non recoverable it is completely has to be written off so these are some of the varieties yeah depending on this calculation of basic provision outcome of that can be calculation of book value of the asset same equation change in lhs rhs see how do we find depreciated value of the asset net book value same formula installment overdue the where we committed default plus future installments minus future finance charges and the basic provision normal provision from right hand side i move to left hand side minus normal provision will give me the net book value of the asset so that simple lhs rhs change nothing difficult in that okay all simple examples class work not difficult at all all you have seen yeah one more point also worth discussing about NBFC is the accounting for investments done by NBFC. Investments are classified in two categories long term investment, there is non current investment, and short term investment, there is current investment. As per the guidelines, long term investments should be valued individually. But they cannot be valued in the groups like all equity shares, long term investment, all mutual investments. No, individual investment in equity shares of X limited, investment in equity shares of Y limited. So, they should be valued individually they should always be valued at cost and you have done it accounting standard related to investment. So, they should be valued at cost and they should be individual. Cost means what for long term investments non current investment you will not see the market value right. Next short term investments when you talk about short term investments they should be valued at lower of cost or NRV market price. They are valued category wise so short term investment in equity shares investment in shares of A limited B limited C limited all in single category head will be investment in equity shares. Total of all compare total cost price and market price and select lower of it. Individual investment in A, B thought to be same. Total investment in short term investment in all equity shares cost price market price total select whichever is less. So, category wise. Third, 
you can have category investment in equity shares, investment in debentures, investment in bonds, investment in mutual funds, investment in government securities. And it says that global valuation is not allowed. What do you mean global valuation is not allowed? Suppose category 1 investment in equity shares, market price is more than cost price means you are gaining there. Category 2 investment in mutual funds, there also market price is more than cost price, you are gaining there. Category 3 investment in government securities, it is loss, market value is less than cost price. Then the loss in investment in government securities cannot be set off, cannot be adjusted against gain in investment in equity shares or gain in investment in what you call it as mutual fund. So, global valuation not permitted means depreciation loss in one category cannot be adjusted with loss in other category. That is what is investment criteria for NBFC. I told you at the beginning on difference, what five different points to be focused by all of us okay, for NBFC. Here it is net own fund, classification of advances that is standard, substandard, doubtful and loss assets, calculation of provision for doubtful debts in provisioning two categories for higher purchase and leasing business and other businesses. For others, further two classification, systemically important and non-systematically important. The provision percentage only for the first category, standard asset is different 0 0.25 and 0 0.40, rest all in both categories remaining same. For those NBFCs which are into higher purchase and leasing business, the provisioning requirement classified in two part, calculation of basic provision and additional provision that also you have seen. I discussed with you the valuation aspect of investments, there is short term investment and long term investment, a technical word I taught you, global valuation is not so, all these different varieties should be there on the back of your mind when you approach the exam auditorium about NBFC weightage around 6 marks. Of course, you cannot expect a full length sum carrying 16, 20 marks on NBFC, but this is ICI students, even 6 marks cannot be ignored, where pass and fail has a difference of 1 mark, we have to steal each mark we have to take away each mark, they are not going to donate it to you as a charity. Okay. So, this points has to be taken care of for NBFC, in our textbook you have been given ready made solution in the homework section for calculation of provision for higher purchase and leasing business and even the calculation part for investment accounting that has to be seen. See in the past paper section of our textbook, this question on Samvedan limited, that is what I was talking about, provisioning requirement of a company NBFC which is into higher purchase and leasing business. Requirement was, what is principal outstanding, should a company recognize finance charge and all that. So, first was the basic working note which you very well prepared in all examples of higher purchase chapter, same working out. Starting with cash price minus down payment, then add interest, first installment so on and so forth. In this sum, it says the default is there in the second installment. Second installment means you are talking about this one. Each installment is of 16 lakh rupees 
and there are five installments. Second installment is defaulted and all interest calculations are there in front of you, the full working out. So, solution going for that is about whether to count interest of the second installment which is defaulted as income, answer is yes that interest will be counted as income on accrual system, accrued but not received. So, that has to be counted, the line says here, okay. it becomes, it should be recognized, recognized means that interest has to be recorded. Then that basic provisioning, installment due, this 16 lakh second installment overdue, future 3 installments, 16 3 is a 48, this one. And then interest of future 3 installments and 80 lakh is a cost of the asset, 20 percent depreciation SLM. So, 16 lakh for first year and 16 lakh for second year because default is there in the second year. So, 80 minus 16 minus 16, so WDV is 48 lakh when you make a final total 7.49 lakh is the provisioning requirement, basic provisioning. Same reverse LHS, RHS change will get you the book value, here is. Okay. Now, default here, the overdue period is 45, I am sorry, 45 days, like year end 31st March installment was overdue and question is saying that the board of directors no information is available till 15th May. Installment due was on 31st March, April 30 and 15 days, 45 days overdue. So, additional provision is not required because additional provision up to 12 months of overdue, no requirement of provision. This is only overdue for 45 days, so no requirement. So, all those typical calculations given the only care to be taken by you is in this working out. Of course, not new for you, higher purchase chapter majority of some seats, some you have done this, but calculation has to be very fast and accurate. Many figures are rounded off here, you can round it off, you can write in absolute terms like 80 lakhs, 60 lakhs, ultimate answer is going to remain in the same range, rounding of difference will not be creating much more fuss for your answers. So, this is that particular question with solution given to you in the textbook okay, for basic provision and additional provision. And that one what I am discussing with you investment accounting that sum is also there Anishchit finance. You have investment in equity shares, investment in mutual funds and investment in government securities. See the question asked by them, can company adjust depreciation of a particular item of investment within a category? Yes, within a category plus minus is possible because we are going to make total of the full category. In the question they are not mentioning that it is a long term investment or short term investment. So, we have to presume that question is talking about current investment, short term investment. So, within category of equity shares, like see here, investment in equity shares, you have 6 scripts. In fact, see A, B, C, D, E, F, G, 7 scripts. So, those can be added plus minus because ultimately you are concerned with total cost and total market price of equity shares. Individually, anything can happen plus minus, that is okay. So, first question that can they adjust internally? Yes, they can adjust. Second, what should be the value of investment on 31st March 70? Yes, that should be lower of cost price and market price category wise. Equity shares all 7 scripts total of cost, total of market, select whichever is lower. Okay. The things are given there. Same thing for government security, same thing for mutual funds. Fine. And now when they go ahead for the last variety, it says last question, is it possible to set off depreciation in investment in mutual funds 
again say appreciation of value of investment in equity shares and government securities answer is no why because global valuation is not permitted the answer is very clear here if you see the first category equity shares and mutual funds current investments government security long term quoted current investments quoted means quoted in the market price each category should be valued at cost or market value whichever is less all the things given last one valuation of current investment on overall basis is not considered appropriate inter category adjustment what do you mean by inter category adjustment adjustment of one category with other category of appreciation and depreciation in value of investment cannot be done i give you the perfect word for that global valuation is not permitted it is not possible to set off depreciation in investment of mutual funds against appreciation of the value of investment in equity shares and government security clear so all those five categories we discussed i shown you the practical sums also available in your booklet completely solved answer in past paper sums for higher purchase and leasing nbfc and one more accounting for investment you can just refer to them not much more varieties this nbfc will pause for you but by any means cannot be ignored six marks are not less at all okay so be very careful while going through nbfc calculation wise you should be very very clear and fast also okay nbfc please go them thoroughly and get if possible out of out marks in nbfc